Oh, oh, so I got these UX pins created over five years ago and I got like 500 of them made. And the other week I found another pack of them and I'm trying to figure out what should I do with these cool little UX pins that I made over five years ago. So let me know in the comments below, what should I do with 500 UX pins? <laughs> What's up beautiful people, it's Mizgo here and welcome back to another video. Last week I shared with you guys a video of how I redesigned a landing page step by step and I mentioned I don't use Dribbble for UX inspiration. And a number of you guys followed up and asked, okay, where do we actually go to find UX inspiration? So in this video, I'm gonna share with you four quick tips on where you can get all the inspiration you need for your UX design projects. So. Let's get right into it. Now, the first tip is to actually understand exactly what is the problem that you are trying to solve. So many designers jump straight into Figma or they jump straight into conclusions based on what they believe is the best solution for a UX project. But you need to make sure you understand every single UX project has two key criteria that you need to meet. First, a business objective. Second, a user objective, what the user actually wants. Now, remember, Every project, I personally, this is my personal opinion, is that I will always prioritize what the business wants because ultimately the business is paying for the entire operation. You see this countless times. Even if you take a look at Google, they released the Google Glasses. People loved it. It got a little bit of traction, but it didn't meet the business objective. They obviously had a grand plan for the Google Glasses, but it wasn't met, so they pulled it back. And obviously it might come back later on, but because it didn't meet the business objective, it gets taken away. The organization will cut funding. It will cut the actual operation off. So that is why whenever you're working on a project for an organization, you have to consider and more importantly, potentially prioritize the business objective over what the customer objective is. So if you want to better understand what the two want, there are, here are some questions that you can implement in your own process, in your own dialogue with stakeholders and also your customers. So if you are speaking with your team, trying to understand what are we trying to solve? Well, the first thing you should be asking is, what problem are we trying to solve? This is the clearest question that you can be asking to get, get clarity to what is the problem that you are trying to solve. But if you also want to understand how do we move towards it, what is it exactly that we want to solve, you can ask what is the North Star for our team or for our organization this year or this quarter. The North Star is a metric that is utilized inside product teams to help guide teams because there are so many different pods towards one metric to make sure everyone is moving in an aligned way. Everyone is moving towards one key metric. So asking what is that North Star? You can also ask, what does success look like to us? What are some of those key criteria? Because when you understand what the problem is and also the criteria that we're working towards, this will give you a really good understanding of exactly how we should be approaching this problem. What is the actual problem? What should we be doing? Now, the second tip is to download your competitor apps. Now, I personally don't like to reference what competitors are doing that much because I understand that every organization is at a different stage. They've been in the market for a different period of time. They have different target audiences. And even though if they're in the same industry and they're classified as a competitor, no way would they be tar targeting exactly the people that you are targeting and for the people that you are solving for right now. There are so many people in this world and so many customers, it's impossible for everyone to be targeting the same problem, the same people at the same time. So when you are referencing inspiration from com competitors, it can actually work against you and misguide you in terms of creating a solution. But if this is a direction that you wanna head into, you can, and I prefer to reference their iOS apps and also their Android apps. But if they don't have one, you can reference their websites. Now, the reason why I like apps is because with the limited screen, limited real estate, companies have to really strip out all the bells and whistles no distraction and get real clear focus on exactly what they're trying to achieve. Now, for whatever reason, if you can't get access to their actual apps, you can reference this website called mobin.design. They've got a ton of different apps that they've screenshotted every single step of the way. So you can utilize that for UX inspiration, but even for UI inspiration as well. Now, the third tip for you is to really empathize with that problem. So many designers jump straight into Figma and they start designing right away based on the first idea that pops into their mind. 
Well, you can do that if you have a really, really, really good idea about the problem set and your customer audience. Now, if you don't, it's so important for you to truly think about, take the time to empathize, imagine yourself in the shoes of your customer and think, okay, if I'm the customer, what do I actually want to get out of this product or service? What do I want to see in this app? What are the trust cues that I need to see before I want to commit? How many steps in the funnel would I would it take before I drop off? These are all the little things that you should be thinking about in your design decisions so you're not just creating screens for the sake of creating screens. UX design goes far beyond just creating a few sets of screens because you think someone's going to complete them. Let's just be clear, when you create a design and you put it out into the real world, no one really wants to waste time filling out a form or utilizing your beautiful designs. That is just the sad reality. So what we need to do is be really creative, really tactical with our designs. How do we motivate the users to take action? How do we really bring transparency through our designs and let the customers know what do we have behind the closed doors? What can we do to put our best foot forward for the organization so we can get more customers, get more value to our customers as well? Those are the things that you need to be empathizing with. Those are the things that you need to be thinking about when you are a UX designer. Now, the fourth and last tip for you guys is to challenge yourself to try and make $1 online. And why do I say that? Because ultimately, as a designer, there's far too many of us who just focus on creating a screen and not really understanding what it takes to create a transaction, to, to get a user, to get someone to, to buy from our product or our service or our e-commerce store or whatever it might be. Far many designers are sitting, are comfortably sitting behind their screens, just pushing pixels around inside Figma, XD, or Sketch. But let's remember, when we are a designer within an organization, we are trying to help the organization make more money, get more customers, get more traction, build more brand awareness. Everything is all about growth and actually getting more traction, getting more visibility in the world. So when we don't have those skills, those tactical skills, we either fall into imposter syndrome or we don't feel confident about our skill set. And I feel like that's probably the reason why because yes, you have the skills to creating the screens, but what have you done practically through your own experience to actually help move the needle for the organization? So that's why I, I wanna push forward the idea of you to either utilize your skills or you create some physical products that you're passionate about and sell it on Etsy or you create your own shop for whatever you want and try and make that $1 or you wanna create your own little product and you hire a developer, you get it built, and then you try to get your first user. These activities, these things that you invest your time into, not only can you benefit from it, but you actually start to build real tactical experiences in making real transactions. And when you can learn that stuff and apply it to your own projects for the organization, you not only become a more authoritative designer, but you'll become so much more confident in your work because you know for a fact that you've done it before. You've done it in your own projects. You've made some money. You've got some users, whatever it might be. You've achieved those outcomes and you've just simply taken it and repurposed it for another project that you've done. Now, if you've realized with UX inspiration, most of the tips that I have provided you hasn't really been about just taking ideas away from other people and applying it for yourself because those aren't deemed the most effective. The best way is to really build the skills in understanding how do you create highly motivating experiences joined with understanding and really laser targeting that problem that you're trying to solve and that is all the inspiration that you need. Solving the right problem for the right people right now with some cool little design tricks and hacks, that's all you need. All right, guys, hopefully you found this video extremely useful and I will see you in the next video very soon. Wow.